Good evening and welcome to lecture two. The topic is file input, reading data from a file into your program. If you have not viewed lecture one, please do so before viewing lecture two. And now let's open up the program editor. And I've created a file called ifstream.cpp. And I've put in some steps here. Um, the 1.5 is because I was inserting a step between 1 and 2. So essentially what we want to do in this program is create an instance of an IF stream object. And we haven't talked about objects really very much, but we'll just, just think of it like we're going to create an IF stream variable or a variable of type IF stream. Then we're going to create an array of floats and we haven't talked much about arrays, if at all. So I'll talk about it when I get to the, that point in the program. And then for step two, we're going to open the file and test the, that the file opened without errors. We're going to read data from the file in step three and store it in our program. We're going to close the file, and then we're going to print the data to the console to prove that we were able to read it from a file into our program. So uh, the normal include IO stream is in order so that we have access to the standard library C out, C in, C error, and C log. And I haven't explained C error and C log, but we'll get to that in another lecture. Now the new one, I'm going to include F stream. And this calls in the standard library objects and methods that are required to support an input file stream object or variable. And we'll get more into that later as well. Using namespace standard, directing the compiler to search that namespace for symbols, saving us from having to write std colon colon c out, for instance, every time we make reference to something from the standard library. Now let's create our main function. And now, looking up at the steps above in the comment, I'm going to create an instance of an IF stream object. I'll call it table. And again, you can think of it as a variable named table of type IF stream. Then I next will, let me get my cheat sheet here and get some notes. OK, so next, let's create the float array. Now, if I were creating a single float variable, that's how I would do it. I'd say A is a float variable, and I could store a float in there. But I'm going to teach you how to do uh, create an array. And by adding the square brackets in the 10, I'm telling the compiler I want an array of 10 floating point variables all next to each other all accessible through the single name A. And the way I would get to the first one is to say A sub 0. The second one is A sub 1. And so on. And the very last one is A sub 9. OK, so that will uh, be the variable that allows me to store 10 floats in succession. Next, I want to open the file. And so I'm going to use table.open. And table is a variable. But the dot syntax kind of gives it away that it's really an object. And the object has data and functions known as methods that are bound together. So anyway, table.open. And then I give a literal file name, table data. That's the file name at the operating system level of my data file. Now, whenever you go to the operating system to get I.O. done, you typically have to check after you issue the command to say, hey, did this happen? Uh, did it work? Was it successful? Or do I have a problem? And so the way that we test that using the IF stream object is to call table.fail. 
which if it returns true means there was a failure and we need to alert the user we'll say uh, error file table data I'll, I'll do it this way error opening file table data that way the user kinda has a clue why did the program abort and where should I look for my problem okay so that's how that works let me find my mouse cursor here okay alright so next uh, if it falls if the logic or the control falls through the if statement it's that means there was not an error and we'll get to the next command which is to read the data from the file into an array so I'll create a for loop a local variable declaration a integer called I initialized to 0 and then the for loop I'm going to test that I is less than 10 and since we're 0 based that means it will go and execute the block in the for loop when i is equal to 0 or any integer number up to 9 including 9 okay and then we have the third part of the loop which is the increment and now just like we used to write cn to some variable meaning we were going to read from the keyboard and store the value the user typed into the variable now we're going to use table because table is the file that we opened and we're going to take data out of table and we're going to store it into the float array named a at the offset equal to i or the subscript equal to i so that each time through we say that's a0 then a1 then a2 so on and so forth and that's how we um, successively store the data we're reading from the file into the array okay now I'm going to close the table file and then I'm going to create another for loop so that we can prove that we actually read the data from the file got it into the program and we're going to display it on the screen now kind of as a proof to that fact okay alright looks identical only this time I'm going to use cout to go to the console out and I'm going to say a sub okay let's parse this line real quick if you're having trouble seeing this at the bottom of your um, your video you should see if you can scroll the window up to see the bottom lines okay so looking at line 31 C out displays to the console and then we say a square bracket as a literal string and then we insert whatever the value of I is at this iteration through the loop and then we have another literal where we close the square bracket we have an equal sign and then uh, we go get the actual value stored in the array at the subscript that's currently controlling that loop okay so I'm gonna save that I'm gonna come out to the operating system I'm gonna compile well first of all I'll do a dir a directory listing and sure enough there's my if stream cpp since I've already done this I'm gonna clean it up I'm gonna delete if stream.exe okay so all we have now is an if stream cpp at 682 bytes I'll compile that I'll use the standard option to indicate I want a C++ 11 compliant compile and then I'll use ifstream.cpp which is the source code and oh look I have an error okay let's fix this error on line 28 it expected a semicolon before table so if I go to line 28 well it looks like I 
missed a semicolon there. It looks like I missed a semicolon there. So there's a couple of places I missed semicolons. All right, let me go back to the command window, up arrow, and this time it compiled just fine. And now I'm going to run the program. Oh, this, this warrants some discussion. Again, the default on Windows using GCC or MinGW is to name the executable a.exe. If I want to give it a friendlier name, I can recall my compile command and type a minus O space IF stream, and that's going to give me a nice name. It's going to give me a name of ifstream.exe, and that's a little more user friendly. So I'll type IF stream, run the program, and it gives an error. It says error opening file table data. And that happened because I do not have a file called table data. But that's where the error message comes from. So now to create that file, I'm going to go back to my program editor. And I'll say new. And I will type in 10 floating point numbers one on each line okay I'm even using numbers that have uh, negative signs and numbers that don't have a decimal portion called out just to get some random numbers going on there to show you what the reading works um, will work like when we run the program okay so there's 10 numbers uh, in characters and we're going to read those characters in one line at a time and store them into the float array so they'll go from being just characters in a file they'll get transformed by the IF stream object and stored in the data type format that is used for a float in C++ okay so let me name this file I'll call it table data now notice here it says normal text file if I hit save right now it's going to append a .txt to this file I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to hit the down arrow, uh, and then I'm going to hit the up arrow on my keyboard, and notice how it says all types. I hit enter, and now it doesn't assume I want an extension. So when I save this, it's actually going to save it to the operating system without a, an extension for the file name. So I just have table data. Notice there's no dot, you know, exe or dot cpp or dot text. It's just table data. Okay. Now, let me run the program again now that the table data exists. And this time we see that it found the file, it opened the file, it read the data in, it stored it in the array. And there you have it. You can see on the left that the numbers on my screen match the numbers that were output by the program. And so that is the end of lecture part two. In lecture part three, I will demonstrate how to do file output by creating a file and writing data to it.